have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Genesis, chapter number 43. The book of Genesis, chapter number 43, verse number 29 is the scripture that I would like to raise for the point of preachment. Uh, Genesis, chapter number 43, verse number 29. If you don't have it, it's going to come on the screen for you. It reads on this wise, as he looked about and saw his brother Benjamin, his own mother's son, he asked, is this your youngest brother, the one who you told me about? And he said, God be gracious to you, my son. Deeply moved at the sight of his brother, Joseph hurried out and looked for a place to weep. He went into his private room and wept there. After he had washed his face, he came out controlling himself and said serve the food serve the food I believe that there's something that I want to raise for the point of preachment my sermon topic today is dream chasers dream chasers I know in nine o'clock I start a little different so uh, do you mind if I just be me for a moment I'm, I'm gonna preach to you but you mind if I just be me all right, so uh, I have a good friend. His name is Dr. Frederick Haynes. He pastor a church called Friendship West in Dallas, Texas. He lead about an 8,000 member congregation. And there he wrote a book. He's the author of a book uh, called How to Get the Feedback That You Don't Want to Hear. Uh, in that book, he gives this illustration. He says that if I was to drop a bag of flour, it will lie dead. He said that if I was to drop a plate, it'll shatter. He said, if I was to drop a rat, it'll run away. But he said, if I was to drop a basketball, it will bounce back. He surmises in his argument that each of the items would do what it does based upon the substance that is made of. And many of you who are in this room have been feeling like the plate, like your life is getting ready to shatter. Some of you have been feeling like the rat, like I just want to run away from my own house. Some of you have even been feeling like the flower, like I've given up my own my dream and I just want to lie dead. But there are other of us who found out that we are built with the resilience of a basketball. That even after we've been dropped, we have the power to rise to our highest apex. We have the power to go higher. We don't have to stay down, but there is something in us that keep on getting up. We like, we got a Timex anointing that we take a licking and keep on ticking. Is there there anybody that is in the church that said the reason that I give God the praise the way that I do because you don't know how many times I've been dropped and I still got back up. You don't know how much pressure I've been under and I still got off the ground. I woke up every day, washed my face, put my pants on and step kept going because I realized that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Uh, I, I want to raise a question to you this morning that is there any dreamers in the house? Uh, come on, this is not a rhetorical question, but this is a question that warrants a response. I'm going to ask it again. Are there any dreamers in the house? Uh, when I say dreamers, I'm referring to people, not people who look at things with the eyes in their head, but rather people who look at things with the eyes in their heart. The eyes in your head give you sight, but the eyes in your heart give you vision. The eyes in your head help you see to the corner, but the eyes in your heart help you see around the corner. The eyes in your head help you see to the heel, but the eyes in your heart help you see over the hill. The eyes in your head help you see today, but the eyes in your heart help you see tomorrow. The eyes in your head help you see your present predicament, but the eyes in your heart help you see future possibilities exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we think, dream, or even imagine that we are able to see further when we look at the things with the eyes in our heart versus the eyes in our head 
head because the eyes in our head will only let us see our present predicament. But the eyes in our heart will show up and let us know that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I can act, think, dream, or imagine because I realize that there is more for my life. That's why some of us come to church and give God a crazy praise and we look ridiculous and people look at you and want to know why are you so demonstrative? Why are you making so much noise? Why are you so loud? Because you don't know like I know what God is able to do in my life. That God is getting ready to do for me what eyes have not seen and what ears have not heard. Neither has it entered the heart of man. That's why there are 30 crazy praises in this room that's about to give God a praise because you realize that sooner or later it's about to turn um, it's about to turn in my favor that the stuff that I'm dealing with is about to turn around for me um, that uh, somebody say vision. vision the eyes in my head give me sight but the eyes in my heart give me vision Dr. Miles Monroe inks this. He said that the poorest person in the world is not a person without money. It's a person without vision. He says a person that has no vision for their future will always go back to their past. Now, can y'all mind if I give y'all my project version, my ghetto version for how I was raised? This is the ESV version. Y'all know y'all got NIV, KJV. This is the ESV, the Advante Showers version. That a person who has no plan for their next will always go back to their ex. That when you don't have a plan for your future, you always deal with the people from your past. And some of you cannot make progress in your life because you keep turning around, going to wasted relationship, going to wasted people, people who wasted your time. But today, my prayer is for you is that God no longer allow you to stay stagnant, but he allow you to move forward in your life. Don't you sit there and wait there for people to support you. Don't wait for people to push you. And and give you an amen because the scriptures say if God be for me I'm trying well my church yet that'll talk back to me today because there is more that God is about to do in your life but the way he do more in your life is he must first give you clarity that the greatest gift that you will ever receive is the gift of clarity uh, this is this is my wish for you guys that God allows us to allows me to serve as one of the pastors here. And my greatest wish for your life is not that God give you more finances, but God give you more clarity. Because some of you think that the greatest gift that you can receive is more money, but the greatest gift you could ever receive is the gift of fulfillment. Uh, that, that when you're fulfilled, that God can do more. So my wish for you is not that God give you clothes, not that he give you cribs, not that he, not that he give, give, you, give, give you more, uh, more, more things, but what he do is he give you clarity for your life because your highest form of compensation is going to be when God provide you fulfillment. And fulfillment is when you wake up every day, look yourself in the mirror, and you know who, what I'm doing, who I'm supposed to do it with, what am I supposed to accomplish, and the way you get that is by having clarity. Somebody say, God, give me clarity. Uh, it is the enemy that tries to bring confusion in your life. Because uh, if the enemy cannot make you corrupt, his next thing is to make you confuse. Because confusion is actually an expression of spiritual warfare. That when the enemy can keep you unclear, then what he can do is he can stop your progression in your life because you're unsure on what to do, what to say, and where to go. And so that's why we have so many people who struggle with their own identity because they're unclear about what God is supposed to be doing in their life. But today, I came to speak a word over your life that this next season for you, you're about to have more clarity. 
You're going to be clear on where you're supposed to go, who you're supposed to do it with, who should be your friends, who you should be married to. In this new space that you're going to, you're going to get clarity because God wants to do more in your life, but he must first make it clear on what he's supposed to do in your life. Um, so this is what the enemy does is he, the enemy tried to use tactics to keep you unclear, to keep you unfulfilled. So the enemy will use these things to keep you unclear. The first thing that the enemy would use is he would use individuals to keep you unclear because people who, who will impose their opinions on your life. So he will use individuals to try to speak what you should be doing when in all actuality they have no idea what you should be doing. You did not go to bed with me. You didn't see what God showed me. You ain't dreaming. You, I said ain't. You ain't dreaming the same stuff that I'm dreaming because what I'm dreaming about is bigger than your weak mind. And that's why you can't let other people's opinion cripple what God is doing in your life. You got to do exactly exactly what the assignment is and what God it gave you the anointing to do. The second thing he tried to do is he tried to use emotional injuries to keep you unclear. He tried to use your, your past failures to uh, infect you because this is what happened. With a physical infection, you can see it, you can feel it, but with an emotional infection, it don't bother you the same because what it does is it disrupts your thoughts. But today I came to speak to you who've been having nightmares to let you know that you're getting ready to dream again. you getting ready to believe in yourself again. I don't care how many times you failed. I, mean, I don't care how many divorces you've been through. I don't care how many people walked out your life. God is going to give you clarity because he's about to do more in the time that you got left than what he did before. Is there anybody that I'm talking to that say God is going to do more in my life? This is what happens with the enemy because when the enemy can give you an emotional infection what he does is he tries to steal from you here go right here John 10 and 10 he says this that the thief cometh not but to steal kill and destroy some of you think that because you survived it that the enemy came to kill you but all the time the enemy don't come to kill you sometimes the enemy comes to steal from you and so you think that you made it because you survived when in all actuality the enemy didn't do it to kill you he did it to steal your joy or to steal your peace and so you don't know that it's missing until you reach back for it and try to grab it and it's no longer there but I came to tell you that today God is about to say swiper no swiping you're about to get your peace back you're about to get your joy back and in the words of MC Hammer you too legit to quit because God is gonna do more in your life he's gonna do he's gonna do more so uh, the enemy tries to to steal from you because uh, what the enemy tried to make you believe is that he's trying to steal your dream so some of you think that you started the business because it was your dream you think you got in that marriage because it was your dream when in all actuality the enemy ain't studying your dream he ain't thinking about your dream some of y'all talking to y'all friends like uh, girl the devil don't want me to blow up the, I got all these haters the, but the devil ain't studying you blowing up the, what the devil is actually after he's actually after the God dream that is on the inside of you and this is the struggle with a God dream that a God dream is something that will be on the inside of you. It's created called a divine want to. That God will want you to want it so he puts a want to on the inside of you so that you can want it because in all actuality he wants you to have it and the reason that you struggle is because you're struggling with God when is the time I'm going to get it from the time that I want it. It's called a divine desire that God will not take the desire from you because he understands that if I get it to you then you're going to change the world, then you're going to do something different for your family, then you're going to cause things around you to change. And I just came to tell somebody, get your want to back. 
Everything that you dreamed about when you was a child is still going to come to pass. Everything that you thought about when you were younger is still going to come to pass because the word says that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he ought to repent of anything. If he said it, he's still going to do it in your life that you have clarity. Somebody shout clarity. Clarity, clarity that God is still able to do something in your life. We are approached here in our text as we do the electric slide into Genesis. We find a man by the name of Joseph. He is 17 years old and he's dreaming. He's dreaming and it's crazy because God gave him a dream at the age of 17 that don't come to pass until the age of 40. And this should help some of you spiritually because sometimes the time of announcement is not the same time of fulfillment. You have to deal with the struggle in between the announcement or when God showed it to you to the place of fulfillment when you're actually going to have it. The struggle comes is how do I manage the hallway between the time of announcement and the time of fulfillment? But this is my prayer for you is that God give you long faith. It's something that happened in the hallway called long suffering. It comes from the Greek word macro thumos. Macro means long, thumos means heat. That sometime in the hallway God put your life under fire and you trying to figure out how am I going to make it? How am I going to get to this dream? I came to let you know that if you stay long under fire I found out something about gold. The longer that it's under fire the more valuable it becomes. And I'm just trying to find my praises up in here that you've been under fire and you've been trying to figure out how am I going to make it? God said I put you on fire because I'm about to increase your value. That things around you is about to get better. Can I prophesy to you and say your money is about to get better? Your business is about to get better? Your family is about to get better? Your marriage is about to get better? Because God put you under fire. I'm, I'm under fire and now I got to struggle with the time of God, when you going to do what you said you're going to do? So it caused me to question God and I become frustrated. And frustration produced stagnation. And anytime you become stagnated, you stop making progress. And so when you don't make progress, now you sit in the same spot and argue with yourself. The hardest part is having self-reflection. It's what Dr. Henry Cloud called a hard conversation with self. That sometimes God will leave you all alone because sometimes he don't want other people to get the credit for what he's about to do in your life. So he leave you by yourself and make you deal with it because he wants to get the glory. And I don't know who talk I'm talking to that you've been dealing with depression and you've been stressed out because you've been feeling alone. I came to tell you, you not by yourself because you serve an ever-present God and he is with you to the end of time don't you give up on you don't you doubt you because God is working something out in the hallway just for you so Joseph is given a dream and his dream is for his entire family and at this moment Joseph starts sharing the dream with his family he starts sharing the dream with people who he thought loved him, with people who should have been excited for him. And he shares it with people who have small minds. And this is the hardest struggle of someone that is anointed, is when you're forced to share major dreams with minor thinkers. Uh, and so you have a big idea and you're sharing it with people who only think on the average level. So no, they can't see you being a millionaire. No, they can't see how the business is going to get off the ground. No, they can't see how you're, you're going to excel at that job. No, they don't see how you're going to finish the degree. It's because their mind is small. But I came to tell you that in this season, even if your family don't support you, God's going to have your back. And he's about to raise you up in the midst of your family and bring you through and push you into something great and something new. It's the family who he's sharing the dream with. And 
the family don't have a problem with the dream. They just have a problem with their place in the dream. So uh, this should teach us that people who you love and people that love you won't always love your dream. Because this is the battle that most of you face is when you start winning or becoming successful, the first people that hate on you is your family. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not the only one that struggle with this. Don't leave me out here by myself. Uh, uh, but it's always the family like, why he doing that? Why he on Facebook? Why they post the pictures? This is what you tell them. Baby, take a good picture of me. Because the way I look now is not how I'm about to look over the next 30 days. Because if you don't like it now, God is about to do more in my life. I'm looking for about 30 crazy praises that said my life is about to get better. My business is about to get better. My marriage is about to go higher. This is what the Bible says. It talks about proximity, that I prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemy. The thing is, God don't want you to get rid of your haters. You're supposed to pull the seat out for them and say, take a seat because God is about to do more in my life. He's about to do more. He, he's about to do more. So, uh, he articulates his dream to his family. His family don't like their place, so they prepare to kill him. Because when people can't kill the anointing, they try to kill your dream. Yeah, uh, so uh, they, they prepared to kill him, and it was the brother Judah who said, nah, cuz we ain't killing him. He ain't going out like that. We, we can't get rid of him like that. He, Judah, Judah said, we just gonna throw him in the pit. Because Judah became the intercessor between Joseph and the brothers. Now, some of you uh, miss that because you don't know who Judah is. And I'm glad we in church because I can tell you who Judah is. Uh, so, uh, watch this. Judah, Judah is the, the, the son of Leah who was in a codependent relationship with a man named Jacob. So, she, she thought that if she procreate or she produce, that she could get this man to fall in love with her. But he never still loved her more. So, what she found out was is that if I can't get him to love me more I gotta get to God to love me more and so what she found out is after having all these bad chaps y'all we're in Louisiana that's how you say it after having all these kids she found out that praise because Judah means praise was the way to get to God yeah and I'm just want to find my praises in here who said I didn't come to church for shape form or fashion but I came to be the lion in Judah I came to give God my best praise because it's going to connect me to him. So what I'm trying to tell you is that when you praise God that it blocks the stuff that is supposed to kill you. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I got a little excited I took off running. Uh, so watch this if you give God a praise what it does is it creates a fortress around you is what the book of Psalms says that it becomes a stronghold or it becomes a covering for you because what praise does is it protects you from the pits of the enemy. And I just came to let some of you know when you praise God, God is about to protect you from the stuff that's supposed to kill you. He will protect you from cancer. He'll protect you from diabetes. He'll protect you from lack because God will do more with your praise. God will protect you. And Judah make intercession. And then they family tree come down and it's a boy by, it's a group of people called the Ishmaelites. Uh, that's, that's real Baptist. Y'all don't know who that is. All the ites, y'all. Uh, I ain't talking about Tina Turner and I ain't talking about none of them. I'm talking about the Ishmaelites, the Ishmaelites. Now, uh, um, if you understand who Ishmael is, Ishmael is the son of Abraham. And Ishmael was the fruit of Abraham's mistake. So, oh God, this is, this is good to me right here because it was the fruit of somebody else's mistake that saved Joseph's life. What am I trying to tell you is just, just because you made mistakes, it doesn't mean that God won't still use you. 
That, that, just, that just because you fell short doesn't mean that God won't, won't speak over your life. Just because you had a baby out of wedlock, just because you felt like I failed at things, I want to let you know that God is still in the business of renewing and restoring, and it's something called grace, and when grace get up on you, he will do more with your mistakes than what you did in your failures. I want to tell somebody, I, I'm a living witness of this, that, that just because you made mistakes, this is something called recompense, that God will use your mistakes to be able to create a profit for your life. I came to let you know that don't think you're going to go through all this hell without God repaying you back. God is about to give you double, y'all. I'm, I'm trying to find my church that God is about to do double in your life. He, it's, it's recompense. He will, he will restore. So what happens is that uh, Joe gets sold into slavery and then he go to Potiphar's house. This the end. I know y'all tired of me. This the end. Uh, <laughs> uh, he gets sold. He, get go, he goes into Potiphar's house. And when he gets into Potiphar's house, what happens is the whole house get blessed because Joe there. Y'all, y'all don't believe me? Let me make it Bible. Genesis chapter 39. It's right here in verse number two. It said that the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and lived in the house of the Egyptian master. Now, some of you missed that because Joe was supposed to be working in the field. But because the Lord was with him, he's in the house. (laughs) Y'all. <laughs> because uh, if, if God is with me, it doesn't matter where you place me. God will move me from the back of the line to the front of the line. Y'all, and I just came to let some of you know that you're about to have a turnaround. That God is about to move you forward. Your life is about to make progress because God is about to turn it around in your favor. That Joe... Is in the master house, and this is what verse number says. Said when he saw that when he, when his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything that he did, Joseph found favor. And y'all, my gosh, uh, I'm looking for my church. Uh, this is what it said. It says, "Anchor found favor." In the eyesight of, the, I'm sorry, y'all. I, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 he he said he said Nicole found favor in the. I'm 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 sorry. I'm looking for somebody. He said Ollie found favor in the. I, I'm, I'm looking for it. Uh, I'm looking for my church. He said Lacey found favor in the eyesight of God. And I just came to prophesy over you that this is about to be a season of favor over your life, y'all. Mm. Uh, y'all. Somebody shout favor. Favor. Favor is about to be over my life. Uh, He said, found favor. And Potiphar put him in charge of the household. Yeah. Uh, And everything that he owned. For the time he put him in charge, the entire household of the Egyptian became blessed. That's what it says. He said that because Joe was there, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, St. Gabriel. He said because Anchor was in St. Gabriel, the entire city, I'm sorry, y'all, y'all don't believe that, y'all. Uh, uh, but, but, but he said that because Joe was there, everything around him got blessed. And people don't understand that the reason that some of their companies haven't folded is because you've been there. And God don't want you to live in lack because you his children. The reason that the marriage ain't fell apart, the reason that the family ain't fell apart is because you've been in it. And God said, I got favor on you and I'm not going to let it go out because I want to bless your life and provide favor over you. 
uh, that's why I, that's why when I come to church, I'm careful who I sit next to uh, because because one person, everybody around them got blessed, and I'm looking for the one person on each row that say you don't even know, but I'm the favorite person on this row, and and because I'm favored, you don't even know your children about to be blessed, your marriage is about to be healed, your finances is about to change because I'm on this row. Somebody shout, it's me. It's me. I'm on this row. Uh, uh, I know some of them jealous of you. They hating right now, but they don't even know that I had to go through hell to get this type of favor. I had to cry sometime to get this favor. I had to holler sometime to get this favor. And you think I'm going to come here and look cute and act like I've been sucking on limits? I got to give God a praise because favor is on my life. I got favor. Can you slap five with three people and say favor, 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 favor? Favor ain't fair, but it's necessary. Favor ain't fair, but I got favor. I, I got favor. I got favor, y'all. I'm sorry, I, I just had a moment, but I got favor, y'all. Y'all, I should have lost my life, but I got favor. I should have been drunk and sleep on the bridge, but I got favor. I should have lost my mind, but I got favor. I should have died from prostate cancer, but I got favor. Y'all, y'all I, I got favor, y'all. Y'all, I got, I got favor. So... Joe said everything around him got blessed because Joe showed up. Come on, team. That things around them shift because Joe was there. You don't know how much this city will shift because Anchor is here. And we're able to do more because I believe we got favored people in here. We got people that got the favor. And that God give you clarity. Joe, this is a story that Joe get thrown into prison. And he stuck with people who are actual criminals when he was actually just running for his life. I told them at nine o'clock that it says that Joseph was put under pressure by Potiphar's wife to sleep with her. And he got accused for something he wouldn't do. And some of you don't know that you've been facing struggles over stuff that you wouldn't even do. I wouldn't even think like that. I wouldn't even hang around them. I wouldn't even allow them in my house to chill. And Joseph did something that many of us need to do. The Bible says Joseph ran. And I gave them an analogy about uh, in the movie Forrest Gump. He told Forrest, he said, run, Forrest, run. Y'all, as some of you in your life, you need to know when to run, Forrest, run. Run away from that anger. Run away from that stress. Don't let it hold you down and keep you in bondage. But my prayer today is that God give you clarity. He give you fresh vision that he restore to you the joy of your salvation. We're standing all of the building because many of us have been like Joe. Our family has underestimated us. And people I thought I could count on tried to shame me. But somehow God still restored me. Because don't you realize that when Joe ran and said that she ripped his coat. The thing was the brother had already took the coat. So what happens is that but God had to give him another one. And I just came to tell you that you may have lost some stuff but God is about to do it again in your life. He's about to do more. Joe goes to prison and he has two people that are in there with him. One's a butler, one's a baker. If you ever been to a fancy hotel, there's butlers at the door. And the, the butlers, what they do is they open the door. 
And if you've been around people who really can cook, I grew up in the house with a mama that can cook. And, and, and so uh, every time she get ready to bake something, she would always stir it. And I got an old school mama. She didn't want to use the blender. She had the bowl, y'all. And, and she used the spoon to whip it. Uh, and, uh, and when she do it, she would, she would take ingredients and mix it up and put it together. What am I trying to tell you is my prayers that God give you two people. Your butler, one person that's going to open the door for your life. And another one is a baker that's going to help you put your life back together. The person that's going to stir up the ingredients and make your life better. That God is going to restore everything that you lost. Some of you came to church because you was ready to give up on your dream. The truth of the matter is you was ready to walk away from it all. You like, I'm tired of being around these people. I'm tired of going to church. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of the people at my job. And, and you feel like you done lost sight of your dream. You wanted to be a doctor. You wanted to be a lawyer. You wanted to be a president. And you feel like you lost sight of it. Today, my prayer is that God renew your vision. That he give you your dream back. That he, he calls you to dream again. I cancel the nightmares that has been facing you. The private tears that nobody to see the private scars that have held you captive. Today I declare that you are loose and that you are free because God is restoring your vision. He's restoring your dream back to you because he wants to do more in your life. And there's there's some of you here that you're just praying, God, I just need a turnaround. God, God, if you don't do anything else, I need you to shift this thing for me. This, this ain't what my life's supposed to be. I'm supposed to have been further along than this. I'm, I'm tired of dealing with the same old failures. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of feeling like I'm, I'm stuck in the same rut. Today, I believe that God is pulling you forward. He's, he's calling you out of it. You won't go back to it. You, you won't face it again because today, God is going to give you new life. Your dream is not over. Your life is not over. God's about to let you chase that dream. He's going to give you your want to back. He's going to give you a fresh desire. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's some of you in your seat. And right now, tears are even coming down your face because you're like, God... If you don't help me through this, if you don't help me restore, if you, if you, don't, if you don't pull me out of this, I'm going to give up on it all. I don't know, I don't know why, why I'm saying this, but, but I ask y'all, can I be me for just one second? But, but I know when I hear the spirit of the Lord, but, but there are some of you that need to just get out your seat and bombard this altar because you're like, God, I need to be restored. I need my dream back. I'm tired of having nightmares. I'm tired of crying privately. I'm tired of being in this same space of stuck. I need more for my life. I know that you have more for me. I, I know I should have finished the degree. I know, I know, I know that I'm supposed to launch this business and I want to give up on it all but today God came to restore you where you had come 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 God is waiting on you he wants to restore you he wants to help you he wants to renew you he wants to pull you through it this is not the end the song said because sooner or later it's gonna turn in your favor and I want to just pray with you. I want to I want to pray with you because I believe that God came to meet you right where you are. God came to touch your heart right where you are. To help you be restored. So family, can I pray? It won't always be like this. God will. That And sooner or later, it's going to turn in your favor. It's turning around for me. Yeah, Michelle, you mind if I tell you something? And I don't know why I'm hearing this, but I'm, I want to speak this directly to you. I don't even know who Gail is, but God told me to tell you that you've been praying for a lady named Gail. 
and I know what I hear, but the Spirit of the Lord says, but God told me to tell you this, that God says by August the 10th, I'm going to throw her a surprise party, y'all. Uh, y'all, uh, uh, that I'm going to do more in her life. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over for her. I don't know why, but I came to speak it. It's not over for her. Y'all, um, I'm, I'm sorry. This is, not, but I, I care a prophetic mountain. I know, I know what I hear the Lord say, but, but God is about to do something for Gail. Can we, do you believe that God is about to do something? Come on, I, I need a family in here. God is about to do something, y'all. So, Father, I thank you that the people in this room have not given up on their dream, but you're restoring their passion. You're lighting a new fire under them. God, you're giving them the joy for sadness. God, you said in your word, what we sow in tears, we reap in joy. So today I pray for new joy. I pray for new favor. I pray for, pray for a restored grace that's going to fall on your people today. I believe that when they leave this room, favor shall follow them. Favor shall cover their children. Favor shall cover of their families. They shall build a legacy that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Do more in the time they have left. And we thank you that you're going to do a new thing in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen.